Hi everybody and welcome back to my backyard once again. Today we're gonna take a look at the Beta FPV Aquila 20, a very inexpensive FPV beginner kit. I remember reviewing his smaller brother, the Aquila 16, a few months ago and I really liked the idea of this drone because they have bottom face sensors that keep the position and altitude steady so they make learning FPV much easier because the drone flies for you at the beginning then you can unlock and fly like a regular drone and this feature is something that 99% of the drones out there don't have but the shortcoming of the Aquila 16 was that it was a little bit small and underpowered so if you wanted to progress further in FPV and try doing maneuvers you really couldn't I wish they made a bigger, more powerful version and here my wish came true. In the carrying pouch you'll find everything you need to fly the drone. You get the new VR04 goggles, the new Light Radio 4 Special Edition, the Aquila 20 drone itself, an extra proprietary 2S 1100mAh HV battery. It comes with this BT 3.0 connector and they give you the little USB-C charging adapter. The batteries have an on off switch you need to keep pressed and they turn on and this acts as a reader to know if they are charged or not. You also get a USB-C to A cable and a bag with a little fill screwdriver, propeller removal tool, a spare set of Genfan 2.2 inches propellers and the adapter to connect your drone to the computer. Let's talk about specs starting from the light radio for SE which is incredibly similar to the normal light radio. They just removed the two five position switches they had in the bottom of it they were used to calibrate the trims of the gimbals but really I don't think you need them in fact you can press the setup button and manually calibrate the gimbals if you see some drift everything else seems the same it has the same gimbal the same 2000 milliamps battery that's gonna give you around eight hours of use I liked the light 4 radio a lot and this is basically the same again the sticks feels very natural they have a lot of switches you have two two position switches two momentary and two three positions I don't know if it's possible but this cheaper version of the light radio 4 is a lot stronger and it doesn't creak as much as the more expensive one. At the bottom you have a USB-C for charging, for connecting to the simulator and for updating the internal ExpressLRS 2.4 GHz transmitter. It has an output of maximum 100 mW just like the more expensive version and it's gonna be good for whoops for medium range flying. Maybe you can go out one two kilometers with this radio if you need something more you will need to upgrade the radio since it doesn't have a bay at the back. But still I like seeing ExpressLRS radios into entry-level kits because they are future-proof. They work with 99% of the drones in the market right now so if you want to get another drone you can still use this radio. The bind button is used to bind to your drones. If you press it before turning on the radio you will see the light becomes purple because this radio has Bluetooth inside. You can connect to your computer, to your phone and use the simulator wirelessly, which is gonna be incredibly good for entry-level pilots who wanna train a lot. For entry-level kit, the goggles feel quite decent. They only have one receiver, they don't have diversity. Probably they will make more expensive ones with two antennas. You cannot replace the antenna, so they are entry-level goggles, of course. You will not get crazy range from them but they have redesigned them the foam now feels quite nice I don't get basically no light leakage maybe the slightest amount from the top but they made it so wide so people with glasses can still fit them inside this opening they added this rubber pad that goes on your nose and it blocks light and keeps the goggles comfy and the foam is quite soft they have a cool design a little light in the front on the left side you have the USB-C for charging because it has a 2000 milliamps integrated battery and on the other side a barrel plug connector if you want to use a battery pack which they made a hole to slot at the back of your head so it's very comfortable and balanced at the top you have a reset button record button because you can record dvr power button and a 5d position joystick for navigating the settings inside the goggles you will find the sd card slot and the lens looking into them they are quite clear and the field of view is wide the only menu present at the moment is the channel lookout if you keep pressing on the 5d joystick it goes into auto search and it's quite fast, faster than some more expensive goggles I have seen. 
press OK to confirm and that's it. If you record, you just see a little dot on the top. During the flight test, you're gonna hear me complain a lot about the camera being dim on the drone, but that's not the case, it's pretty fine. The problem was that the goggles were shipped with a low brightness from factory. I have a pre-released version of this drone, so it doesn't come with a manual. I didn't know if you press up on the 5D joystick, it opens a menu. The menu is right now on the screen, but since the font is white, on the white static you cannot see it. And now that I turn on the drone, if I get the menu again, finally you can see it a little bit and you can adjust the brightness, the contrast, the saturation. And lastly we have the Aquila 20 drone, which has been quite upgraded since the 16. Finally it has a power button on the battery, so you don't have to keep it half this lodge to keep the drone shut down. Being 2S and 2.2 inches propellers, I believe it's gonna be quite stronger. With one of these batteries, you're gonna be able to fly 10 minutes if you go slow and about 5-6 if you push. I'm gonna test this, of course, later. At the front, you have an analog camera. At the bottom, you will find the port to connect to your computer with the provided adapter and three sensors that help the drone keep its position and altitude. So it's gonna be very, very easy to fly for a beginner. And finally, it's time to fly. I'm gonna fly two times. The first, I'm gonna go slow, and the second, I'm gonna push it as hard as I can. Oh! It's incredibly stable. I didn't expect it to be this stable. Wow. Okay, it's recording again. I guess it wasn't recording before. I'm using these goggles for recording, so what you see is uh, what I see. Let's start again from slow. So, the three position switches change modes and speed. These ones change the speed. I was saying it's super locked in. Like super stable seems like a dji drone this is gonna be incredible for beginners the only problem is the camera is dim it's very dim so you will struggle a little bit seeing what's happening now is not the best uh, time to fly because the sun is setting if you go a little bit higher it's better but oh, 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 oh. i guess we lost if you go high it will uh, lose uh, the tracking. Yeah, it's... Oh! Chill down. Okay. Okay. Maybe I was praising it a little bit too much. If you are uh, down, it's fine. Like, uh, up to three meters, the sensors work properly. But if you go higher, they completely lose track and this drone becomes incredibly hard. To, to control. Like I was not able to and I have a lot of experience. So if you fly indoors, go slow and use this mode, low to the ground, it works pretty flawlessly, but you need to change into another mode if you wanna. Wait, I changed mode. Maybe you need to change it before taking off. I am learning, this is the first time I use the drone. Let me see what it does because I don't want it going into the pool. Ah, wow. Let's now go into S mode and see how it goes. Okay, this is uh, what uh, I am used to, is a normal angle mode. You can see I feel very much at home now. And it flies uh, pretty decently. Angle mode, super stable, super promoted, feels very, very, very nice. Look how precise it is. First time flying. Wow, not bad at all. I'm gonna reserve uh, acro mode for later. But if you start in, uh, you cannot change. Yeah, okay, you cannot change modes between uh, while you're flying, which is a shame because I'm used to changing them and sometimes I want to go angle, sometimes I want to go acro. 
here you are locked. So we have been flying for five minutes outdoors and still we didn't get a low battery warning. So it seems like, wow, we are about to do 10 minutes and the VTX is at 350 milliwatts, which is the most powerful setting. So you have a little bit more range. I am impressed by the efficiency. Indoor, maybe you can even do more than advertised. 12 minutes seems to be possible if you just fly this low. Wow. 10 minutes, let's land. Now let's try the drone in manual mode, which is the hardest, it's full manual, and you will need to practice quite a bit on the simulator before trying it, otherwise you will break the drone. But in this mode you will be able to do tricks, flips, and all the good stuff while you fly FPV. The Aquila 16 didn't really have the power to fly well in manual mode. Let's see if this one is different. M mode, full manual, fast, let's try. Okay. Okay. So. Uh. Uh. Okay, it's better than the Aquila 16 for sure. It's not the best experience I ever had, because maybe the battery is a little big and heavy. But, yeah, it's decent. Like, you can totally learn how to fly manual mode. Flying stable like this, no problem. The drone uh, has a little bit of a mind of its own and uh, it... Uh, makes the maneuvers a little bit dirty sometimes. Let's see if the chickens are out. I believe they went, uh, yeah, they are uh, sleeping in the chicken coop. It's late in the afternoon. I had to talk a lot about this drone and... <laughs> oh! Yeah, it's not precise, you know? And beware, I am a skilled pilot, so I know what I'm doing. It's gonna be different from what you feel to, from the simulator, it's not as precise. But it has the power to do a little bit of acro, it has the power to recover. So yeah, you will be able to learn basic flips. If you wanna do a front flip, you can totally do it. So at least Let's see if I can do an inverted yo spin. Uh, you see, it's uh, it's a little gets a little oh, 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 oh. it gets a little bit jumpy. You need to learn how to counteract it. And uh, is this a chick? Oh, we have a chicken chase. <laughs> it's very hard to see how how dim this uh, this camera is. Maybe the recording will not be as dim, because I remember the Aquila 16 was the same. I was seeing pretty dim inside the goggles, and then when uh, exporting the video from the SD card, it appeared normal. But the goggles are not dim. I don't know why, I tried. I will try this one as well and let you know with other goggles and tell you if, uh, if it's dim or not. It's time for my final opinion on this Beta FPV Aquila 20 entry level FPV kit. I feel like my expectations were right. Making it bigger than the Aquila 16 made it so much better because it flies better, it has more power, you can do a little bit of acro on it and it's also more efficient. It can take you from zero experience in FPV to level 6, maybe 7, because you can start very easily if you don't know how to control anything. The drone flies for you basically and you just press forward, it goes forward very slowly and as you are ready you can go into more advanced modes while you practice on the simulator. So for learning it's incredible. There are a couple of caveats of course. When you fly in sensor assisted mode you have to keep the drone low to the ground, fly slow and be sure you have a recognizable surface on the bottom because the sensors are quite basic. 
if you go faster, if you go higher, and if you cross maybe the pool where uh, you have a specular surface, the sensors are not gonna work anymore. You don't have a GPS on it, so the drone is gonna go haywire and you're gonna crash. This is basically the only caveat. Otherwise, angle mode works very nice, much better than many drones I have tested. Acro manual mode is fine. It's not the best tuned drone I ever tested, but you can flip and roll a little bit so you learn how to do that. If you want to do more advanced maneuver, it's not really precise, but I wasn't expecting it to be. Still, I feel like it's a nice machine for learning. The radio is pretty fine. The goggles are fine. I wish they were a little bit brighter from factory, but now that you watch my review, you know how to increase the brightness. So I feel like it's not too much of a con. But still, my suggestion for most people that want to start FPV is spend a little bit more in the beginning, get better gear, buy once and buy forever, because this gear, despite being still technically future-proof, you will want to upgrade it for better performance very soon. And that's all for today. As always, remember to like, subscribe and comment on this video. Let me know what you think about this drone. And if you want to buy something, check out the links in the description down below because clicking on them, you help my channel a lot. And many times you also find discounts. So thank you so much. Stay safe and happy flying. Bye.